Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to continue looking at Lewis structures and specifically we're going to look at molecules that are exceptions to the octet rule. So when we first started talking about Lewis structures we said that we're going to create them such that each element has its completed octet and that's because it's most stable. Well it turns out there are exceptions to that that we need to understand. There are three categories of exceptions. There are exceptions where we have an odd number of electrons, which therefore makes it impossible to have an octet. There are exceptions where we have less than an octet. We call that having a hypovalent element or having more than an octet, and that's called when the ele element is hypervalent. So let's talk about odd elements with odd numbers of electrons. We tend to call those substances radicals or free radicals. And you can find them in car exhaust in the form of nitrous oxide or nitrogen dioxide. You can find them in the human body as the oxygen, uh, oxygen radical. And these are caused by incomplete combustion, radiation, harmful substances such as fried food, alcohol, and tobacco and also within normal biological processes. They are very, very reactive, or in other words, unstable, and are dangerous to life. Um, interestingly, what, the way that we protect ourselves from free radicals in the body is by vitamins. Vitamins, also called antioxidants, will get destroyed rather than the other parts of our body. Let's now talk about hypovalent compounds. This is where you have an element that has fewer than eight valence electrons um, in its uh, completed form. These, will, we will see, will tend to contain the elements beryllium or boron. These molecules are very rare um, and are not very stable. In order to obtain them, you need to have you need to create them under very low pressure conditions. Some examples would include beryllium difluoride, boron hydride, or boron fluoride. And this is where there's simply not enough electrons to go around. These molecules are very unstable. Our last category is the most common of the three, um, especially with what we'll be dealing. These are where we have hypervalent compounds. They have an expanded octet. These are much more common, and they occur when the central element is in the third period or below. So what we're looking for there is having that the element is very large, and that they tend to be bound to very small electronegative elements. And some examples of that are listed for you on the screen. Now, what's the reason for that? Well, when we're talking about having an expanded octet, we want to have lots of electron density. In order to minimize the repulsions that there would be due to extra electrons, this can happen when your central atom is large. So if you have a small central atom versus a large central atom, then the electron density, if you were to put 10 electrons around each, those 10 electrons can be spread farther apart from each other in the large element versus the small element. And that's going to minimize repulsion. That's why we only ever see expanded octets in, in large elements. And when you attach them to small electronegative elements, then what happens is they pull the electron density away from the central atom towards themselves, further reducing the strain on the central atom due to it having more than eight electrons. All right, let's practice. For which of the following molecules is it not possible to draw a Lewis structure that follows the octet rule? I want you to try this on your own. And so pause the video and come back and I will walk you through the process. Welcome back. So we want to know which element, for which element is it impossible to draw it following the octet rule. Remember, 
the steps for writing out for drawing our Lewis structures. We need first to count the electrons. Xenon tetrafluoride has 36 total electrons. The next step is to draw the central atom and the central atom um, will be the least electronegative element. And we connect those atoms with single bonds. Then we will distribute the electrons as needed to satisfy the octets. When we do this, we notice that we still have leftover electrons. So we move to what we did earlier being step five. Too many electrons means that we put them on the central atom. So we have four extra electrons and they go on the central atom. So it is impossible to draw a Lewis structure for xenon tetrachloride that follows the octet rule. What about the other two molecules? Well, when you draw their Lewis structures, we see for phosphorus trichloride, we can draw a structure that follows the octet rule. And for oxygen difluoride, we can draw a Lewis structure where it follows the octet rule. So the only one for which it is impossible to do is number one. Okay, at this point, I would like you to do some extra practice. I've listed here six molecules. I want you to try and draw out the Lewis structures for each of the following and then identify whether they, are, uh, they follow the octet rule or if they violate which violation they are. So pause the video and, and then come back after you've done that and I will show you the answers. Welcome back. So for beryllium dihydride, that looks like the following, and this would be a hypovalent molecule, too few electrons. O2 minus, would look like the following, or I guess rather what I just drew. This has an odd number of electrons. Now you could have drawn it where the odd number was on the element on the right, or maybe you drew it with a double bond and an odd number of electrons. It turns out that there's no, Beth, no good, good way to draw out the Lewis structure for an odd number of electrons. This is sulfate. Sulfate looks like the following. It has a charge on it. We need to indicate said charge. And this is hypervalent as an expanded octet. BH3, boron hydride. Looks like the following. This is also hypovalent. PO4, 3 minus. And then we need to draw a double bond. Include the charges, three minus. So this is also hypervalent. And then NO2, that has a total of 17 electrons, so we can already tell that's going to be odd. Nitrogen in the center, oxygens on the left and right. Distribute the electrons. We've got 16 shown have an extra electron, we're going to need to form a double bond. You can see that nitrogen is not satisfied. Or we could have drawn one where
one of the oxygens was not satisfied. Any way you draw it, it's a bad situation. And so this is going to be having, again, an odd number of electrons. Okay. The one step that I did not explicitly show you, but I had already done, and that you should always do, is count up the number of valence electrons. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and if you have questions, feel free to ask. Have a good day.